Today I'm going to go over, uh, basically encode what it takes to create a Kubernetes controller. Kubernetes controllers are a really powerful uh, piece of the Kubernetes infrastructure <clears throat> that allow you to watch for things happening in the cluster and then take action based on those things happening. And this is basically how all of Kubernetes works. Um, that there's basically the, the, the spec, basically the stored or desired state of the cluster, and it is the job of various controllers in Kubernetes to converge the actual state on the desired state. And so there are quite a few controllers in core Kubernetes that do this, but you can also write your own controller that can, you know, that watches for something to happen and enforces a state that you care about in your own custom setup. So in this uh, situation, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show a demo uh, of um, taking very basic action in response to cluster state. So what I have here is a tower of minnow board turbos. The top board is the master, the two boards below it are the nodes. And what I'm going to do is uh, for every pod in the cluster, I'm going to, I'm going to have a controller that's watching for uh, changes in pods. And for every pod in the cluster that the controller is aware of, it's going to blink the LED on that top board. And this, as just a simple demonstration of how something you know external to Kubernetes can watch for things and, and take extremely custom action based on them. So um, first I'm going to talk about the, the Kubernetes architecture for those who aren't really familiar with it. You have an API server. The API server uses etcd as a backing store and all of the component, components of Kubernetes watch the API server and communicate with it to make changes. And so whenever the user creates a resource, it contacts the API server. Uh, whenever a, the controller manager is looking for cluster state, it's, it, it establishes what's called a watch on the API server. And it's the job of the API server to tell the controller manager whenever something that it cares about has occurred, it has changed in the cluster. Um, and the scheduler is really a highly specialized controller in that it it ha has the role of um, whenever a pod is created, it's looking for pod creation, and then it makes a decision about what node that pod should go on. And it doesn't schedule, it doesn't contact the node to schedule that pod on it. It just assigns node properties to the pod and it is the job of the kubelet who is also watching the API server to then spin up pods on that are assigned to it by the scheduler. Um, but there's nothing that keeps us from creating a custom controller that watches the API server and takes custom action based on it. So this is an example of uh, such a controller. So what I have here is uh, the basic structure of a controller is that you have a controller struct, you have a constructor of sorts that basically uh, creates the handlers for when pods are added and deleted. In this case, I just take simple action here. I've got number of pods. It's a field in my controller and I increment it whenever there is a pod added and I decrement it whenever there's a pod deleted. And then there's a, uh, a, a you know, a entity in Kubernetes called the informer and it creates this controller in the store. The controller is what runs in a loop and keeps your store in sync. And it does that using the two functions that you specify here, the list function, which create, which does the initial listing of the resources that you're interested in knowing about them changing. And then a watch function, which keeps that store up to date. And the watch, the API server sends watch events to, to controllers that are watching particular resources. In this case, we're watching pods. Uh, we want to make sure that our cache is up to date every resync period, and then the handlers are defined right up here the, for the add and delete function. Here I've got a very simple function that all it does is it gets the number of pods and blinks the LED then for each pod that it knows of. And then here is the uh, main control loop. So this is typically controllers have a function called run, and that is what spawns the go routines that um, are the these controllers that are 
that uh, the informer creates that are going to enforce whatever you specified up here. And then uh, all the rest of it's pretty easy. The, the, here's the GPIO code. It's 36 lines. And then uh, main, this is the only part that is relevant to the controller. The rest of it is just handling flags and stuff. But uh, yes, so you just uh, pass it the arguments and then you know say go controller run. So now um, get to the fun part. So what I have here is I've got I've got that controller compiled into QLED. So I'm just going to run this. And uh, right now we've got this is a graphical representation. I've got the two nodes. There's no pods running. So I'm going to do the combined view here. And we're looking at uh, this LED on the top board. So when I start it, it's going to shut off. And uh, because there are no, um, actually it's blinking because it's the, there are actually pods if I don't filter <laughs> here. These are the infrastructure pods. So really, I just want to watch the ones in the namespace. So let's do namespace default. So there are no pods in the default namespace. And if we uh, look now, that LED on the top board is staying off. So we're going to come over here, and we are going to create some pods. So I just created a replica set that spawned two pods here, and they're coming up. And if we look down here, I'll, bring, I'll make it bigger here. You can see that LED on the top board is blinking twice. That's because the controller was notified by the API server that two new pods were added. If we, uh, I can proceed in the demo here, we can go up to uh, four pods. It's going to put two on each node there. So now I've got four pods running. And if we go there, wait for it here. One, two, three, four. There we go. And uh, we can scale it back down to one. One is a lot easier to count. So there we go. Pods are going away. And you can see how quickly the controller updates. I mean, there's not, there's not a latency because it's doing, it has a watch on the API server. It's notified immediately when things happen. And if we scale it down all the way, it's, you can see that the light just stays off. So that's a simple demonstration on the power of Kubernetes controllers and how you can write these to enforce custom conditions within your Kubernetes cluster.